two lectures yes and do tell me more time on my electricity ah uh, and do a little more time on bio electricity that is perfectly all right ah uh, that's what i Okay, Professor Ji, you can start a lecture, okay? Now we are done. So, so I welcome all our uh, Professor Bhattagar uh, for the talk of today. Yeah. And the topic of the discussion is biodiversity and epigenetics. So I would request Professor Bhattagar to deliver his talk. <laughs> Because letter eight and nine are different. They are genetic aspect for health and disease, genes and impact on unity. And then our ninth is basically including uh, electricity and epilepsy. Okay, okay. Okay, that's all right. That's all that's right. Okay. That's okay. okay. So briefly, I will explain. The, uh, Okay, let us talk about the genes and its impact on health and disease. We already talked about the genes, that genes are basically the, um, the entities which are present on chromosomes, and uh, they are responsible for all the heritable characters. Uh, here, I just want to say that in a family, every individual has the same eye color, same hair color, same skin color, etc. The question is why this is similar in parents as well as in the case of a children's. If a parent has a gray hair or white hair, the children will also have a white hair sometimes. So why these kind of characteristics are there? Because these characters are passed from one generation to other. Not only these characters, but some diseases are also passed from one generation to the next generation. In many cases, these diseases are basically related to one single cause, but there is also a possibility that large number of genes are involved or combination of genes are involved means more than one. And then they are influenced by the environment. What happens that if there is any mutation takes place or any change takes place in a gene during a person's lifetime, and as we said, that this mutation is called basically acquired. It is called acquired when there is an influence of environmental factors. Environmental factors like ultraviolet radiations, any drug which you take, exposure to long-term exposure to X-rays, or any other high radiations. So these are all called, called acquired mutations. But these mutations are basically heritable. For example, in case of a skin cancer, skin cancer is basically caused due to the excess exposure ultraviolet radiation. And sometimes it is observed that this skin cancer can be transferred to the next generation. Sorry, cannot necessarily pass them to the next generation. But there are certain um, diseases which can be passed from one generation to another generation. As we said that the genes are responsible for synthesizing proteins, which may act as an enzyme, hormone, and some other kind of a structure proteins. So any change in a gene can result into a change in a protein or absence of a protein, because if gene is not proper functioning properly, the protein will not be synthesized. So these are the two causes, either the change in a protein structure or absence of protein structure cause about cause various type of disease in our body. And there are about 5,000 clearly hereditary diseases, some of which I am naming here. 
One is called as a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy related to heart, single cell, sickle cell disease, cystic fibrosis, Huntington's disease, Parkinson's, cancer, etc. I cannot write down a um, large number of the names of the diseases here, but just to give an example that some of these diseases are passed on from one generation to another generation are basically, um, these are the examples. <clears throat> okay, so as we discussed that there is a change in a sequence of a gene can influence the development of a common illness or these type of illnesses which I have just suggested. The environment, environment can directly cause changes to the gene, okay, in, which is present inside the chromosome or in the cell. For example, exposure to sun damages DNA in the cells, and if this damage goes unrepaired, gene changes will be copied into new cells, which are formed in the body. Means if there is any change in a DNA because of the environmental factors, sometimes the body itself repairs the gene, but if gene is not repaired, in that case, this effective gene can be transferred or can be copied, means that gene can form another copy and that copy will go to the different type of cells which are printed in our body and can be transferred to the next generation. See, there is one case, uh, I think on the first lecture also, I, I discussed about, but I did not show the photograph. This is a boy called Bob Hope. Uh, it's in England. And uh, this boy was called Bubble Boy. And as you can see, there is a outside, there is a, uh, what you call a plastic bubble in which he was kept. And the reason is that uh, this boy has a disease called SID, severe combined immune, immune deficiency disease. And that was basically because of the absence of uh, a protein called as ADA, adenine and D aminase. This is basically an enzyme which was not formed in this boy's body. And that was due to the presence of a defective gene transferred from the parent to the boy. Although the parents were normal, but the boy had this disease due to the what you call uh, gene. There is also possibility that when there is a transfer of chromosomes from one generation to another generation, sometimes these chromosomes get broken during the transfer. So one of a part of a chromosome is separated from the main chromosome, and this broken piece can go to the another cell. So from one cell, it will be missing, but it is present in the another cell. And if this extra missing copy of the gene is present that can also cause the developmental diseases which are I, which I named earlier. So these, these type of problems, mutations, chromosome broken, or uh, uh, exposure to environment conditions can cause, can cause the development, growth, and functions of, can affect, sorry, the uh, developmental conditions can also affect the growth, can, can also affect the functions of the body systems, and can develop different kind of So I'll just end it here because the immunity part will be more important. So I'm going into this. Um, see, what is immunity? We need to understand it. This term actually derived from a Latin word called immunis. And that time in Latin, the meaning of this was exemption from military services or from tax payments. Well, our body has different type of systems we know. Like we have a circulatory system where the heart is present as complete system where the blood flows in the entire body. We have a muscular system right in the entire body system which supports the bones, our movements. We also have an excretive system. So urine is formed by this and then it is released outside. Uh, we also have a um, respiratory system um, lungs are there, certain other structures are there, which help in uh, respiring the oxygen and releasing the carbon dioxide outside. So basically, we have different kinds of systems in our body. And similarly, we have a reproductive system. Testis, ovary, everything is there. 
similar to this there is another system in the body known as immune system okay this system which is present in our body is very complex because the system has a ability to recognize something which is present in body in two terms one self and another is non self now question is what is self self is actually the different parts of the body like protein carbohydrate lipid or amino acids any other thing which is present in the body and like the bacteria which are present in our um, body systems like uh, in our elementary canal e coli bacteria is present uh, throughout our lifetime uh, some other bacteria is also present some viruses are also present in our body and they are lying for a long time in our body but they are not showing their effects because the body has recognized it as the own part of the body and therefore they call it as a self so body recognize these as a self or a part of a body so body doesn't react against it but when anything enters into a body anything a drop of a water a drop of a drug uh, a small um, quantity of a poison as anything if body just rejected then it will be called as a non self substance because body is, is recognizing it it as not a part of the body so basically body works in the in this system self and non self and immune system is responsible for recognizing self and non self substances once body recognizes non self substance the body will react against it like sometimes a bacteria enters your body a virus enters into your body and the body is start reacting against it to neutralize it mm -hmm. so this system which is also called as a immune system is basically a defense mechanism of a body well this defense system of a body is recognized in two parts again one is called as specific substance a specific system and another is called as non specific system or we can call as um, the parts of these this immune system can be differentiated into two types specific components and non specific components well what are first we talk about the non specific components non specific components act as a barrier barrier means they stop anything to enter into the body well what are these barriers the last number of uh, uh, structures present in our body which act as the first barrier to the entry of non self substances our skin and the production of sweat on the skin is basically one because uh, uh, sorry uh, is one the saliva which is secreted in our mouth is second the acid produced in our stomach is third uh, hair present in our entire body is a fourth then the secretions in our ears secretions in our uh, eyes they are all non specific components and act as a barrier and they they are the first barriers which eliminate the wide range of substances including microorganisms which try to enter into our body so these substances basically remain sorry um, um, these components are basically non specific components and they remain in our body throughout our system throughout our life because it can remain throughout our life uh, secretions remain throughout our life and other things also remain throughout life okay or uh, i will define it again later on the another system is known as specific system the specific system is basically made up of cells which are present in our body blood cells basically if you know the names like neutrophils monocytes basophils acidophils mast cells platelets platelets i think you have very commonly heard about this name so all these cells are basically making a non -spe uh, sorry a specific component of this immune system or defense system of a body but they all act when 
the pathogen or non-cell substance break the barrier and enters into our body. The first cells which react with this uh, foreign substance which is entered into our body are called as neutrophils and monocytes. They are large cells and uh, they have a special characteristic that they can feed on anything which is entering into our body. Even the, uh, the water they can engulf, they can engulf bacteria, they can engulf particles, they can engulf drugs, they can engulf anything. So if the body recognizes it as a non-self, the neutrophils or monocytes are the first attackers which attack on these substances. When the cells are involved, that type of activity is known as cell-mediated immunity because cells are involved. Okay? Okay. Once these cells are involved and they try to destroy or neutralize the actions of a bacteria or viruses or any other poison or any other thing which enters into our body by breaking the uh, non-specific barrier, then there is another component which comes in, um, in the action. And uh, there are certain specialized cells which are also part of these neutrophils monocytes known as white blood cells in addition to red blood cells. These white blood cells are basically uh, converted into a special form and then they synthesize a chemical substance known as antibodies. When they, these antibodies are also capable of neutralizing these substances which I talked about, non-specific, uh, non uh, sorry, uh, the foreign substances. As I said, when the cells are involved, it is called as a cell-mediated immunity, but when the antibodies are involved, which are the chemical substances, this reaction is known as humoral antibody, okay? Antibodies are very specific. They are produced against a specific foreign substance. And therefore, they can act against a specific foreign substance, like a specific bacteria entering into our body. The antibodies are produced in our, when this WVC comes in contact with the bacteria, this type of a WVC actually synthesizes antibodies against that bacteria and then try to neutralize it. So the action of antibodies is very specific. On the other hand, neutrophils and monocytes have, or other cells which I talked about, they have a generalized function. They act against all the bacteria, all the viruses, all the substances, foreign substances entering our body. Okay. Immune system, again, divided into two types. One is called as innate, another is called adaptive. What is innate? Innate, as I said, right from your birth. So what is birth? What is available from the birth? Skin, respiratory system, excretory system, stomach, acid, secretions in the eye, secretions in our, uh, uh, what you call, uh, ears, et cetera, et cetera, hairs on our entire body. So anything which is present right from our birth is known as a, and acting against the foreign substances known as innate, and the activity is known as innate immunity. But if, but if anything enters into our body by breaking the barrier, innate barrier, and then comes in contact with these cells as I named already, the neutrophils, basophils, WC, WBC, acetophils, etc., and they are able to recognize them. In that case, the body react against this and prepare a plan to uh, neutralize them. Let us understand like this. So in that case, this is known as a adaptive immunity because the body has learned by coming in contact with that particular bacteria. It can be also called as acquired immunity or adaptive immunity. Well, you will be surprised that these cells, which are actually acting against the uh, foreign substances, they have a memory function also. Means, suppose a bacteria A entered in her body. The body has tried to neutralize it by some actions, maybe a net action or the acquired action. Now, the structure of a bacteria will be recognized by these cells. They are called as a memory cells. When second time, the bacteria enters into our body, then 
these cells will react immediately. And can you believe it that this second time, the reaction time will be less as compared to the first one, and the reaction is more intense than the first time. So this is basically called as um, memory function or antigenic memory in our body. I'm not going into details of this. And just briefly, I will suggest a few things. Um, this adaptive immunity or acquired immunity is basically classified into two types. One is known as active or passive. Well, this active and passive are very specific because it is related with the transfer of uh, immunity. Do you know that uh, when there is a bulk of a child, the initial first phase, maybe for a month, when the baby is taking milk from the mother, or the baby is inside the uterus, that time the mother is connected with the baby. So through the placenta and through placenta, certain antibodies which are present in mother, they are transferred to the baby. So in the initial phase, these antibodies which are transferred from the mother to the baby, actually acting against the foreign substances if the baby comes in contact with them. Similarly, the first milk of the mother which is yellowish in color, is also very important. And doctors always suggest that they, the baby should be fed the first milk, which is yellow in color, because that consists of a large amount of antibody, which help the baby to act or react against the um, antigens, uh, foreign substances. Because in the early phase of this time, the baby doesn't have the complete defense system working against the uh, foreign substances. This type of antibody which, or uh, the immunity which is transferred from mother to a baby is known as passive. But if suppose um, if we have a uh, what you call a serum received from some institution or from a market which is a anti-snake venom, it is normally prepared in an institute near Bombay called as Afkin Institute. And then different against cobra, against great, and other poisonous substances, this institute is preparing serum. If this serum is injected into our body, in that case also, the body acquires the capacity to act against that poison of a cobra or anything. Okay, so this kind of also, and by receiving that serum, the body acquires the ability to react against the foreign substance. This is also called as a foreign, uh, passive. But if suppose we intentionally inject a very light amount of a poison into our body, very, very small quantity, micro quantity, and then leave it as such for some time, the body will react against this very minute quantity of a uh, poison and develop some kind of a antibodies against that poison. The body, the antibody will accumulate in your body. They will remain there. Okay. Next time when you inject this poison into your body, maybe in a more small quantity, but those antibodies which are present in body can react against the foreign substance. So this kind of action is known as the active um, immunity. So immunity are basically vaccination is also a kind of a active immunity. And uh, this is basically called as an artificial immunity uh, developed into our body. These are the different kind of cells which are present in the body, helping uh, uh, helping um, uh, neutralizing the uh, what you call uh, foreign substances. And these all cells are present in our blood. There is another system known as a lymphatic system in our body, which is present right from the top to the bottom. And you can see these small uh, circular structures. They are basically called as a lymph nodes, and they also act against the uh, foreign substances which enters into our body. And this complete system, in addition to the blood vascular system of blood cells, called as a lymphatic system. 
so basically the blood cellular sorry the cellular system and the lymphatic system are actually acting against the foreign substances which it travel enter our body and very briefly i will talk about the memory um, but is there enough time chalo do three slides hone hain memory ke bare mein involvement of genetics in the memory i i have given two examples in this uh, there is one example is leslie lemek which was a blind servant a learned or talented person in field of art or science notable for his work as a musician even though he has never heard a music lesson in his life but he was musical genius erupted early and sp spontaneously as an infant means although he has not learned the music lessons in her early life but even in, in that period or even as an infant he was a musical genius and was able to um, play large number of instruments and etc and later he became the professional musician so maybe this kind of a ability was installed in him when he born or transferred from his parents another example is alonzo clemens he was actually a sculptor and from a colorado and at the early phase means at the childhood age he had a severe brain injury and uh, that left him with a developmental disability but after that injury he began to sculpt with whatever is available to him and then he become a very famous sculptor a very strange is any he can able to sculptor anything which is given to him any picture you can give him and he can sculptor it interestingly every muscle and tendon will be perfectly positioned in the sculpture by him again this man has no formal training of sculpturing so these are the two examples which shows that there is some kind of a genetics or heritable genetics involved in this there is another example very interesting example there are butterflies i have shown the picture here they are known as a monarch butterflies they every year they make a 2500 mile journey from canada to mexico where they stay for winter and in the spring they return back to canada and this is happening for the last number of uh, generations so question is a monarch butterfly fly from canada to mexico reach to the mexico stay there for some time and then the uh, reproduce there produce new uh, what you call uh, um, butterflies and then they butterfly return to canada 2500 miles question is how do they know a route they have never learned so must be something similarly there is another example known as a songbird they are also known as oshin they have a different musical type of singing patterns songbirds are perching birds also called as oshins they are found throughout the world even in india large number of these birds are reported and they have vocal organ very typically developed for a musical voice and they can sing and that musical voice looks like a beautiful song these birds use these songs to attract the female or male different kind of species have a different kind of song song birds learn singing intricate song singing these songs early in their life but how do the young birds learn the same uh, song to sing well studies conducted in 1950 showed that nestlings of these birds raised without exposure to adult males develop abnormal song but when they were exposed to sound recording of adults means adults were not there but only the recording was there even then these new birds were able to sing exact musical song which their parents have to sing uh, had to sing this demonstrated that the birds might have learned songs in their early life or this is some kind of an innate learning this was later explained 
by several uh, experiments um, and one very interesting experiment was conducted by a person called James V. McNall. He published this experiment and he said that this type of a learning is processed, processed from one generation to another generation during the, and as a innate transfer, means um, before the birth, these kind of learnings are transferred from one generation to another generation. And actually what he did, he used two worms. And actually uh, he fed one worm to another worm, okay? And, sorry, I'm somewhere missing. Um, actually, he, that particular worm was uh, taught some kind of a specific uh, movement for, for some time by this experiment, experimental. And then what he did is, out of that group, um, he took one worm and uh, part of it is fed to the newly born worms. And what happened very surprisingly that these new worms who have fed over this worm has started moving exactly, which was taught to the other, uh, uh, means the parental worms. So by that, he, he believed that some kind of a transfer was there. And he suggested that possibly a RNA molecule, which is synthesized on a DNA. This RNA molecule, as I said, that these RNA molecules are responsible for synthesizing the specific proteins. So this RNA molecule is basically um, encoding some kind of a memory from one worm to a, another worm. So um, by this way, we can explain briefly that the memory also has some kind of involvement. And this is the experiment which was conducted um, by the McConnell. And there is another experiment which was conducted by another person. This is a very famous worm known as a canor hibernitus elegans, very commonly used for molecular biology and genetic experiment these days. Because see, it is very difficult to have the rats and other animals in our body. And uh, there are large number of organizations which uh, act against the use of these animals. And therefore the scientists have started using these kind of animals for the purpose of studying molecular biology and um, uh, genetics. Um, okay, I think we don't need more than this because there are a large number of explanations. Uh, you can read directly because I have uh, included every text possible uh, to explain this. I will have another lecture uploaded on this. Professor Bhattagar, uh, yes. before starting a discussion on bioelectricity, can we take some questions? Yeah, sure. No problem. Okay. So, Alokji, if you have a question, you can ask. No problem. Yeah. Please. If somebody has any question, they can raise. Uh, before Professor start discussion on uh, bioelectricity. Uh, please raise your hand so at least we can unmute you and you can ask a question or you can put your questions in a common chat. And yeah, uh, that, will, that, is, that is also possible. Anokjan, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, well, Th thank you, well, Navi, and yes. thank you so much, Dr. Bhattagar, for an enlightening talk. I yeah. have a few questions. Yeah. I'd like to begin with, what are germ cells? Germ cells? Okay. Hmm. Okay, I think the question which you asked, I'm going to cover in this next lecture, bioelectricity. Uh, okay, so tell you, we will discuss that later. Yes, yes, so, the other question was that you 
आपने हेलो हाँ बोलिए हाँ बोलिए आपने लेमकी का और एलोंजो का एग्जांपल दिया एज एन एलिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ ट्रांसफर ऑफ मेमोरी पर उन दोनों उदाहरणों में उनकी स्किल्स के बारे में बात की तो क्या स्किल्स और मेमोरी एक ही थी देखिए स्किल्स तो ठीक है लेकिन बेसिकली क्या है कि जब आप चीज समझते हो और सीखते हो तो वो मेमोराइज है आपकी बॉडी में अगर वो मेमोराइज नहीं होती है तो फिर आप आगे बढ़ते कैसे हो या आप उसको कैसे शो कर सकते हो तो कहीं ना कहीं वो मेमोरी के फॉर्म में आपके ब्रेन में है या कहीं कहीं स्टोर्ड है चाहे वो स्किल हो चाहे कोई और हो है तो स्टोर तो उसको नहीं पड़ेगा अदरवाइज यू कॉन्ट एक्सप्रेस इट तो इसलिए मैंने मेमोरी वर्ड यूज कर लिया उसमें अब मैंने जो दूसरा एग्जांपल दिया मेरे को वो दे देना चाहिए था साथ में जो मैंने बर्ड्स के बारे में बताया आपको मोनार्स के बारे में बताया तो अभी जो फ्लाइज है एक बार कनाडा से मेक्सिको जाती है पच्चीस किलोमीटर रन करती है और फिर वहां से वहां तो मोनाज फ्लाई का एक लाइफ होता है तो वो तो हो जाती है खत्म रिप्रोड्यूस हो जाती है अब जो नई बॉर्न होनी है वो वापस फ्लाई करती है तो उन नई बॉर्न को पुरानी को तो पता था कौन सा रास्ता है बट जो नई बॉर्न हुई है वो अगर वापस कनाडा जा रही हैं और रूट को फॉलो करती है एग्जेक्टली तो उनको कैसे पता कि हम उस रूट से आए थे एक बात सॉन्ग बर्ड्स के बारे में मैंने आपसे कहा था कि सॉन्ग बर्ड्स हैव ए स्पेशल म्यूजिकल सॉन्ग्स है ना अब सॉन्ग बर्ड्स को जैसे अलग अलग तरीके ये म्यूजिकल सॉन्ग्स गाते हैं या मतलब प्ले करती हैं या सॉरी बोलती हैं तो लेकिन अगर सपोज एडल्ट्स के साथ जैसे उनका रिप्रोडक्शन हुआ फिर नई जो बर्ड्स आई वो बर्ड्स सपोज एडल्ट के साथ नहीं है जैसा कि एक्सपेरिमेंट में किया गया और फिर उनको सिर्फ रिकॉर्डिंग सुनाई गई इवन फ्रॉम द रिकॉर्डिंग देवर एबल टू लर्न इट तीसरा एक्सप्लेन जो बहुत ब्रीफली मैं एक्सप्लेन कर देता हूं कि एक वर्म को आपने एक स्पेशल मोमेंट सिखाया ठीक है जैसे एक लेटर पे चढ़ना सिखाया सपोज मान लें और उस वर्म को आपने मारा और उसका जो कुछ पार्ट है जो मतलब जैसे उनका भी ब्रेन होता है तो सपोज उस पार्ट को आपने एक बिल्कुल अलग से वॉर्म को आपने फीड कर दिया ठीक है अब फीड कर दिया तो ये जो नया वॉर्म है जिसने उस वॉर्म पे फीड किया है उसके ब्रेन के पार्ट को वो कैसे सीख गया किस तरह का मूवमेंट करना है लेटर पे चढ़ना दैट मीन समाइंड ऑफ ए मेमोरी ट्रांसफर मे बी इन फॉर्म ऑफ ए प्रोटीन मे बी इन फॉर्म ऑफ आर एन ए मे बी इन फॉर्म ऑफ अदर केमिकल्स एक और सवाल था कि ये एंटीबॉडीज जो क्रिएट होते हैं सिस्टम में जी हाउ लॉन्ग डू दे लास्ट देखिए एंटीबॉडीज वैसे तो काफी लंबे समय तक बॉडी में रहती हैं लेकिन इनके साथ ऐसा है कि इफ यू हैव ए कॉन्स्टेंट एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ दैट काइंड मतलब आपके बॉडी में एक बैक्टीरिया आया और उसके अगेंस्ट में एंटीबॉडीज प्रोड्यूस हुई फिर लंबे समय बाद अगर बैक्टीरिया आया तो हो सकता है कि उन नंबर ऑफ एंटीबॉडीज में बिकम रिड्यूस ये तो होता है एग्जैक्ट टाइम पीरियड तो मेरे को ध्यान नहीं है अभी बट देर इज स्पेसिफिक टाइम पीरियड तब तक ये अफेक्ट करती है उसके बाद तो फिर ये खत्म हो जाती है क्योंकि ये कोरोना वायरस के चक्कर में ही ये सारा एंटीबॉडीज वाले देखा है कोरोना वायरस में भी यही है आपको कहा गया है कि वैक्सीन लेने के बाद ये तीन साल तक अफेक्ट करेगा उसके बाद नहीं करेगा फिर देन यू हैव अनदर वैक्सीनेशन राइट या एंटीबॉडीज है लाइफ लेकिन डिपेंड करता है कि किसी के अगेंस्ट में कितनी एंटीबॉडीज प्रोड्यूस होती है है ना और नंबर ऑफ एंटीबॉडीज बाय एक्सपर्ट क्योंकि आप देखिए हमारे पास इम्यूनिटी का लेक्चर ही वैसे दो तीन जिसमें हर बेसिक छोटी चीज में 
मेरे को कवर करनी हो तो तो मैं आपको सब एक्सप्लेन कर सकता हूँ बॉडी काम कैसे करती है <laughs> तो एक्चुअली क्या है कि उसको प्रोड्यूस जैसे एंटीबॉडी प्रोड्यूस हुई तो उसको बढ़ाया जा सकता है ओके 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 बाय एडिंग सम केमिकल्स एक्सपेक्ट वैक्सीनेशन फ्रेंड्स हां जी जी एक आखिरी प्रश्न आपसे पूछ लूं हां हां बोलिए बोलिए ये स्टेम सेल थेरेपी कैसे काम करती है स्टेम सेल थेरेपी मुझे पहले हमारी बॉडी के अंदर कई तरह के सेल्स हैं ठीक है ब्रेन के अंदर नर्व सेल्स हैं मसल के अंदर मसल सेल्स हैं स्किन के अंदर स्किन सेल्स हैं है ना ये जो सेल्स हैं इनको हम कहेंगे स्पेशलाइज सेल्स क्यों नर्व सेल हैज अ फंक्शन एन स्पेशलाइज फंक्शन फॉर ट्रांसफरिंग इंफॉर्मेशन मसल सेल इज ए स्पेशल फंक्शन of stretching and go to the end relaxation theek okay? hai skin cells as a other function similarly other cells of the body so they are specialized cells but in addition to these cells in our body there are certain areas where non specialized cells are present theek okay? hai kon kon se hain sabse bada example hai hamare jo bone hai uske andar red बोन मेरो प्रेजेंट होता है आई थिंक यू आर ऑल अवेयर अस्थि मज्जा को कहते हैं ओके सो दिस रेड बोन मेरो कंसिस्ट ऑफ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ सेल्स व्हिच आर बेसिकली नॉन स्पेशलाइज्ड दे आर सिंपल सेल्स कंसिस्ट ऑफ अ सर्कुलर स्ट्रक्चर एंड एज आई सेड अर्लियर देयर इज अ स्मॉल न्यूक्लियस इनसाइड व्हिच कंसिस्ट ऑफ क्रोमोसोम्स एंड अदर थिंग्स नाउ व्हेन दिस रेड बोन मेरो actually undergo proliferation means multiple division these cells which are present in red bone marrow they actually form the blood cells the main source of blood cells is actually red bone marrow okay <coughs> so these cells which are present in bone marrow which are non specialized cells simple cells they actually form rbc which is a red blood cells they form wbc which is a white blood cells they form neutrophils they form monocytes they form acidophils they form mast cells they form platelets all these cells which are present in blood are actually originate from these cells so these cells which are totally non specialized have no specific function defined for them are actually called as the stem cells hmm. okay hmm. Uh, early what you call when there is a fertilization in that case the first structure which is formed called as zygote when the sperm and ova meet and they fuse together then first structure is formed zygote and then it multiplies so there is formation of large number of cells known as germ cells okay mm. i will go into details later on Okay, okay, then okay. if you see the nose inside the nose there is a very thin lining hmm. known as a nasal lining that also consists of stem cells non specialized cells hmm. Hmm. if you take out these acha an early placenta the blood which is hmm. consist of which is transferred from um, mother to the child also consists of large number of cells which are stem cells non specialized hmm. cells Hmm. okay if you take this non specialized cells and if you put in a condition like i want to develop these stem cells into a nervous system cells or neurons which are present in brain i have to create a condition where this cell undergo transformation into a neuron hmm. okay hmm. so if suppose a uh, experiment has been done especially in the case of parkinsons that a particular part of a brain where dopamine cells are present it is a structure called as substantia nigra very small structure in the brain which synthesizes dopamine neurotransmitter this dopamine when these cells are not able to produce specific dopamine a uh, specific amount of a dopamine the parkinsons result 
okay right. what we want is we require the enough amount of dopamine to be synthesized in our body so that the effect of parkinson's are subsides so what i will do i will take stem cells which are not yet specialized and i will transfer them into a substantia nigra it is possible i can transfer it okay and in that case oh, the light is gone because of the effect and the pc has going to be close uh oh sorry yeah i'm sorry क्या करें मैं कहीं कोशिश को कनेक्ट करने की या फिर मोबाइल करता हूं और लेक्चर को तो खैर मैं किसी तरह से चला दूंगा ईमेल कर सकते हो क्या पीपीटी तो मैं यहाँ से स्लाइड्स रन करता रहूंगा अगर आपकी लाइट तो मेरे घर पे जहाँ सिर्फ तो लैपटॉप चलेगा नहीं देखिए मैं कोशिश करता हूँ लैपटॉप को चलाने की नहीं नहीं मैं डेक अगर मैं एक बार ये तो एक्सप्लेन कर देता हूँ स्टेम सेल्स का कि व्हेन यू आई ट्रांसफर दिस स्टेम सेल्स इनटू सब्सटेंशियल नाइग्रा इन दैट केस व्हाट विल हैपन आफ्टर सम टाइम दिस these stem cells will be specialized into the specific cells which are going to produce dopamine okay this is known as a stem cell therapy you understood hello hello sir uh, uh, yes yes i think oh, it is it is pretty much clear fine, fine. okay uh, just, just i will yeah. take uh, one minute and i will transfer yeah, this sure. to some other place where the uh, light okay i think uh, i will be able to run this so now we will talk about the bioelectricity uh see in the developmental biology this bioelectricity word actually refers to the endogenous electricity which is basically related with the transfer of information or mediating signals from one place to another as happens in case of a nervous system this bioelectricity also play a very important role in regulation of a cell tissue and at the same time development of different organs the phenomena of formation of organs is known as organogenesis and this is also defined as a patterning of organs okay all type of cells in the body including the nervous system although the nervous system or neuron cells are actually the best examples of bioelectricity but all cells and tissues in our body basically help the exchange of ions okay to communicate between each other bioelectricity is also used to regulate the various functions of different tissues and different organs well what is the nature of a bioelectricity it is like flow of electric current in the wires and but this is basically carried by charged ions like plus charged ions 
and negative charged ions, means minus charged ions, across the membrane. As I already explained, that the cell consists of an outer periphery or membrane. Okay? Uh, and that membrane basically made up of protein and lipids. And there are small spaces which are known as ion channels. These ion channels are actually responsible for regulating the exchange of ions between the outside the cell and inside the cell. And this is very important for the survival of a cell. The cell requires these ions for various functions. For example, the muscle cell require calcium ions and magnesium ions for its functions. Nerve cell requires sodium and potassium and chlorine for its functions. And similarly, the other cells. The skin cell requires the zinc mainly for these functions. And can you believe it? The energy output of uh, no, I will not go into the plant. Similar to the animals, the plant can also generate this kind of a bioelectricity. And it is observed that a single leaf can generate more than 150 volts, which is enough to simultaneously power about 100 LED light bulbs. This much kind of a bioelectricity can be generated by a single leaf in plants also. Here is an example of a nerve cell. You can see here. Nerve cell consists of a body, which is shown as a wavy, and then a long fiber, and then there is a terminal end. Now, information from the cell body passed to the terminal end. Then there is another nerve cell as shown in the, uh, in the top. You can see there are two nerve cells. So from one nerve cell, the information passed to the next generation, uh, next uh, nerve cell. If suppose we prick somewhere to the first nerve cell, or we stimulate the first nerve cell, the information of this stimulation will be passed from this nerve cell through the fiber to the end, and then ultimately to the next cell. Interestingly, you can see here on the fiber, there are positive charge outside and negative charge inside. Means minus on the inside and positive on the outside. This positive and negative charge on the nerve cell is because of the presence of sodium ions outside in more quantity. And negative charge is present because the Potassium ions are present inside, but less sodium ions and more chloride ions, which are basically the minus charge. Potassium ions are plus charge, sodium ions are plus charge. Although chloride and potassium are also present outside, but the amount of sodium ions is more outside and amount of potassium and chloride ions are more inside. Now, what happens when there is a transfer of information Suppose the cell body is stimulated and the information has to be passed through the first part of a nerve fiber. In that case, due to this stimulation, as I said, the ion channels are open. The sodium will go inside and the potassium will start coming outside. So there is a specific movement of these ions. By changing this, that part will undergo a reversal of the charges. So negative charge will be outside and positive charge will be inside. That will stimulate the next part. And what will happen? The same change is there. The positive charge, sodium ions will go inside and potassium ions will go outside. And again, there is a change of a charge. Okay, the previous exchange will come back to the normal position because of the exchange of ions. Then the next part is stimulated. So in this way, positive and negative charges, the sodium ions will go out potassium inside and potassium ion will go outside. So this type of exchange will place, take place throughout the nerve fiber. 
when there is a change we can we can study this by using the the meters and we can see this change when there is a exchange of these and the volt is generated by um, uh, passing the potassium sodium ions inside and potassium ion outside when this change is takes place it is known as a uh, action potential when there is a positive charge outside negative charge inside it is known as a resting potential when there is a change and reach to the top when there is a maximum exchange of ions then it is known as a action potential so resting potential top is action potential and then up is there is a downfall so resting potential then again action potential then again resting potential something like this and this type of a wave will reach from the cell body to the terminal end of the neuron fiber these are known as depolarization when there is a change of positive to negative this is called as a depolarization and when there is again uh, the normal situation or resting potential that case it is known as a repolarization so nerve cell this phenomena always takes place as a depolarization repolarization and during this a large number of volts are produced which can be easily measured with the help of a voltmeter although when there is a next cell is present and the information reaches to the terminal ends in that case from one neuron to another neuron the stimulation passed through chemical reaction and there is one chemical known as acetylcholine which is present in the terminal ends of the first neuron will be released that will go to the second neuron stimulate it and again in this second neuron the same when the body is stimulated again the depolarization repolarization will takes place resting potential exchange potential and in this way the the information passed or stimulation passed from the cell body to the end of the second cell <coughs> this is a structure of a membrane of a nerve cell this is a cell and you can see the outside membrane this membrane you can see here the these are the structures sandwich structure it is called the top small ball like structure and lower ball like structure are proteins and in the center there is a lipid and then you can see these two structures in between the um, what you call uh, in the lipid layer they are known as ion channels where the exchange of ions takes place the all cells have this kind of arrangement this bioelectricity was first time discovered by a person called luigi elicio galvani this man was from uh, was a italian physician and uh, he was also physicist he was biologist he was philosopher and he actually first time recognized the presence of this kind of a bioelectricity in animals and uh, he uh, coined a term called as bioelectromagnetics actually he performed a very special experiment what he actually he was doing some experiment with a muscle so what he did actually uh, you can see in this diagram although it is very not clear but you can see here the legs of frogs so he was actually in the frog for his experiment and he actually hang the frog with uh, skin open and the frog was wet actually what happens when you use animals you have to put certain solution so that the the body parts cannot uh, do not get dry this part consist of uh, mainly a uh, the solution which is drop over the body is basically consist of sodium ions and certain other things okay or normally it consist of a sodium chloride so it is known as a saline solution if other things are not available so when you pour it a drop 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 in that case the body remain wet and the body is not uh, dry we can very commonly use in our experiments when we are working with animals so he held the frog like this and the frog was wet surprisingly when he touched the frog leg with the help of a forceps which was a metal the frog leg muscles started twitching 
they started moving means his legs were started moving the frog was dead but the legs started moving so he was surprised why it has happened then he realized that the metal which comes in contact with the cell line might have developed some kind of a voltage or electricity and because of that electricity the the frog muscle started showing the movement this movement actually he uh, reported in the form of bioelectricity he also named it as <coughs> basically animal electricity in that time and later it was called as the uh, bioelectricity there was another very famous experiment conducted by benjamin franklin and if you i am just reading exact words which are reported in that experiment benjamin franklin actually used the insulated wire from the ridge of his house into a garden and connected it to a frog's leg a second wire from the frog legs was connected to a well which consists of a water and what was surprising that when the lightning flashed during the thunderstorm the frog's leg start moving or showing some kind of a movement and that movement was before the thunder sound is heard so these two experiments basically suggested that some kind of a bias electricity generated in case of animals although these signals are of low amplitude and low frequency electric signals but they can be easily measured with the help of the devices available across the various cells and the various organs which consist of these cells and as i already said that these signals are basically caused by flow of sodium ions and potassium ions and chloride ions so these are the three main things which are basically uh, involved in the production of this kind of a charge this and i already said that uh, um, this uh, change of electricity basically uh, basically um, called as a depolarization and repolarization large number of sea animals like electric eels torpedo rays and at the same time african freshwater catfish and there is another fish known as a elephant nose fish they all sends out a high voltage shocks to their prey which become unconscious sometimes if you might have gone to the goa beach and you might have seen that some stingray a small fish which is present in in those waters it comes and stick you um, what you call uh, uh, sting you and it gives like a a, a shock like uh, if the experience of exactly like you have a um, hold the wire electric wire except that kind of experience is there and it is said that these animals generate uh, uh, electricity and therefore if they sting you they can um, what to call produce a effect of a uh, electric shock well what happens with the development and how bioelectricity is connected with this the role of bioelectric signaling in developing in developmental patterning still remain largely unknown it is not fully explained but still we can understand it although recent work has implicated bioelectric signals in cellular processes such as proliferation and migration of cells now remember this term proliferation migration of cells because i am going to explain this the how it is happening well we also know that there are morphological diversity in living animals if you see the monkeys different kind of monkeys are there small monkeys large monkeys red headed monkeys chimpanzees orangutans they are all related to each other and but there are small differences morphological differences and therefore this is known as a morphological diversity okay how this morphological diversity is actually developed 
or created? That is basically a fundamental question of elemental biology and which can be explained on the basis of elemental patterning. Patterning not only includes the morphological diversity, but it also includes the patterning of different kinds of cellular events or elemental events taking place during the development of different animals and the human beings. Like axial patterning, axial means skeleton patterning. If you compare a, a fish, a reptile, a bird, and a human, or the primates, you can see the difference, the structure difference, or uh, skeleton difference. The skeleton means the, the framework which is formed of bones in these. Fish has a different kind of a skeleton because it consists of uh, the body and there are uh, fins present on the top and they at the base. The reptiles have a different kind of a structure pattern. The birds have the wings. And then the primates have a different kind of a, a patterning, body patterning or bone skeleton. And then humans have a different kind of a bone skeleton. So this is known as an axial patterning. Then different type of tissue formations, size of organs, and certain things which are taking place in the body, such as cell proliferation, means formation of large number of new cells. And there is a cell death also in our body, which is a normal function. And there is a differentiation. Something new is formed. That is known as a differentiation. I will explain one by one very simply. Well, the experiments have suggested that in case of humans, about 78 potassium channels are basically related with the development of this bioelectricity bioelectricity in the human body. And these are named here as voltage-gated potassium channels, calcium-activated potassium channels, two pore domain potassium channels, something like this. And all these potassium channels are under control of genes, but especially the potassium channel, which is known as a KIAR and governed by a gene known as this KCNJ13 and KIAR 7.1 is basically related with the elongation of the fins of a fish known as zebra fish. Okay. This was studied first time. Oh, zebra fish can be. Yeah, I will show you where the zebra fish. Oh, here is the zebra fish. So you can see here this diagram. This is a fish which is known as a zebra fish. This is an ornamental fish, normally kept in our uh, uh, what you call um, aquariums. Very colorful fish. But this zebra fish has a very good memories. And this can be taught different kind of activities. And therefore, it is a very commonly used in different kind of experiments, in behavior experiments and genetic experiments throughout the world. And as you can see in this diagram, here you can see it has a dorsal fin and it has certain ventral fins. If you see the endoskeleton of these, these fins, this is the structure, the first structure and as I written here, fish fin rays. So this is the first structure, which is basically uh, show the internal bony structure of these fins. Now, how this type of a fish or this type of a fin ray actually during the course of evolution change into the different kind of patterns which are shown here in the first diagram this is another fish, this is another fish, this is another fish. The type of diagrams are different. So the bony structures are different and they might have formed because of different kind of a patterning which is controlled by these kind of genes. I'll show you another diagram here and you can see in certain fishes which are known as actinopetrygian, you can see this kind of a bony skeleton, small bones here and then these rays are coming out, uh, which are bony rays. And then if you see in a 
another fish known as sarcopetrasian. You can see entirely a different kind of uh, uh, structure present here. So these patterning are actually reported by the presence of the potassium channels, which are PIR and responsible for this kind of a patterning here. Similarly, in case of um, um, structures, um, in the case of a human, in case of uh, um, what you call certain um, what you call reptiles, and in case of uh, what you call yeah, uh, birds, and in case of uh, this is a structure from a chimpanzee or orangutan, you can see the difference of a structure. These are the fingers, and our fingers, and their fingers. See large number of bones here, and in our case, these uh, small bones. These the fingers are very large here. And in the case of birds, there is a single finger like this, and this is basically the bones which is supporting the, uh, the wings. So you can see that how the patterning of the structure of bones take place in the case of humans, in the case of a reptile, in the case of a bird, and in the case of primates. All these patterning or, uh, of the bones is basically because of explained on the basis of uh, the bioelectricity, uh, which is basically developed in case of cells responsible for formation of these structures. And this is actually called as an axial pattern. Okay, now I will explain the organogenesis, formation of organs in our body. And that will actually explain how the, these uh, ions uh, help in this. See, here is a female structure, because this is a uterus, and uh, this is basically a horn, uh, which is present on both sides of a uterus. Actually, these are the, this is the unfertilized oocyte, which is produced in female. So this is an ovary, a oocyte or a cell, oa cell will be released here. This is basically a germ cell. So this will be transferred into this uh, horn and then it move along this horn. And uh, um, what happens? And there is a fertilization takes place because the sperms are released here. So this ova reach to the, the center of a uterus and here actually, Sorry, the sperm will migrate from here to this place and fertilize with the ova. Now the development of a ova takes place. So first you can see here with this arrow, this is a fertilized oocyte known as a zygote. Okay, then this zygote actually undergo division. So first there is a two cell stage which is present here. It might have moved uh, to this place. So two cells you can see here, the two cells will further multiply into multiply and they will form four cells. So this kind of a division will take place. Ultimately, there will be four, eight cell stages. Then there will be a 16 cell stages. These 16 cells undergo division and form 32 cell stages, then 64 cell stages. So like this, the cell undergo different uh, multiplication. At 64 cell stages, after 64 cell stages, the, these small cells which are present here undergo differentiation into two types of cells. The upper cells are small cells, the lower cells are large cells, okay? And then they undergo a specific uh, arrangement. This is known as morula, consists of only these cells. So from one single cell, by formation of large number of cells due to division, there is a morula is formed, which is a ball of large number of cells. And then there is a stage where these cells differentiate into large cells and small cells. These are known as, this stage is known as a blastocyte. And the cells are known as blastocyte cells, which are present in blastocyte. Now, the structure is known as a blastocele. Then this blastocele undergo another development. And uh, what happens actually, most of the cells are on the, on the outside and there is a hollow cavity inside. This cavity 
is basically called as a blastocell, which you can see here. Okay. And the large cells are basically present on the lower side, which are accumulated here. And the small cells are on the upper side. And then there is a cavity known as the blastocell. Now, after this stage, there is a formation of a stage called as gastrula. So I will again show you the same thing. Single cell zygote, which is fertilized egg. From fertilized egg, there is a formation of two cell, four cell, eight cell stage, 16 cell stage. Then there is a horoball, which is called as a marula. And then there is a formation of a blastula. And this is the central cavity, which is known as a blastocele. And then there is a formation of a gastrula. This is very important stage. Actually, what happens when the gastrula is formed at one particular point, the cells will start migrating inside. And there is a formation of this kind of origination. So these arrow shows the migration of cells inside and the, the blastula cells will go inside to form an invagination. And you can see here like this. And after some time, this complete invagination takes place. This central cavity is now called as a gastro gastrocele. And uh, the last cells, uh, small cells are outside. And due to the invagination, the last cells are just on the periphery of the gastrocele, which are shown in the dark blue color. Okay, this particular stage is called as a gastrocele. We go into the next diagram. If we have a cut surface, if we cut into two these balls or gastrula, you can see how gastrula looks like. You can see here two layered structure outside and here you can see the large cells and you can see here small size cells. So these are the two layers. The first layer is made up of blastocele cells and the second layer is made up of the large cells which is inside and this is a cavity, which is a gastrocele filled with a, uh, some kind of a fluid. And then the, the cells which are accumulated here, which is due to the invagination. So you can see here this kind of a structure. When it moves, the, the opening of invagination is actually covered by a plug-like structure, which is known as the yolk plug. Okay. So here. Now imagine. A yolk plug is in your front and the gastrula is lying there. All the cells which are present here, they start moving. Okay. The top cells actually start moving on the side. The inner cells also start moving on the side and towards the yolk plug. Okay. The cells which are on the top they are basically responsible for formation of a layer known as an ectoderm. The inner cells, which are moving towards the periphery and towards the yolk, they are known as basically endoderm. This movement, which is taking place in this cell, there is another cell, which is known as a mesoderm, which are specialized cells in the side. They are large cells. They are also start moving to take their specific place. So endoderm, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. The cells are identified in these three categories in the gastrula. This movement which is taking place in the gastrula is basically known as morphogenetic movement. And this is actually responsible for organogenesis. Okay, let's go to the next picture. That will explain you clearly how it is happening. You can see here in this diagram very clearly. Okay. So the cells are migrated, and ultimately, this is a gastrocele which is filled completely with the cells. And this is the develop. But actually, this photograph is taken from the hen's egg. Hen's means murgi. Murgi ke egg means liya hua hai. To main diagram ko isko correlate nahi kar raha But gastrula mein jab invagination hota hai, and all the cells are migrating. Uh, like ectoderm cells are migrating on the side, on the periphery, and spread throughout the structure. Endoderm cells start migrating inside as well as on the side towards the yolk plug, and the mesoderm cells are migrating to place. Then, after some time, this kind of structure is formed. This is also taken from the uh, development of a um, hen, 
and you can see the formation of a brain here, formation of the posterior part of the brain, which is called as a brain stem, and then of this tube line structure and on the tight structures which are lying on both the, they are basically formed of the mesoderm cells actually formed from the ectoderm cells and the middle part is formed by the endoderm cells okay so this is the first stage even in the human the similar kind of a um, development is possible a development takes place now let's see in the next diagram what happens now this is the same structure and you can see these are the somites this is the part of a brain it is not basically the brain but the initial formation of a brain. Now, how it takes place, the formation? You can see these four diagrams here. Initially, what happened in the surf over surface of a gastrula? There is a formation of a structure called as a neural plate. Some cells are accumulated. And then on the sides, and then there is a small invagination formed here, like this, you can see. Okay, these cells which are present here, they slowly, slowly proliferate and ultimately form a tube, which you can see here like this. Some mesoderm cells migrate on both the sides of this, this uh, neural plate, and they are basically form an area known as neural crest, very important. This and this point is known as a neural fold because here, the folding is taking place and ultimately formation of a neural tube, which is here. This portion you can correlate with this portion here, where the two linings are there. This will later develop into the brain part of the animal. And these cells which are present here, which are known as the neural hair cells, and they are actually migrated from the uh, side side of the element gastrula, they are actually responsible for formation of the, um, the, the muscles and other structures, as well as the remaining, sorry, uh, they are mainly responsible for the formation of uh, structures which are associated with the brain. This neural tube actually later developed into the brain stem, spinal cord, etc., also called as a notochord. In case of human, if we see the complete development, the development can be seen like this. Cell with the fusion of sperms, then there is a formation of two, two, two cell stages, four cell stages, 16 cell stages, morula or the formation, then the blastula and gastula, then there is a formation of this first structure, which I have shown here um, as a hands diagram. And then this structure will convert it into this stage, then this stays, then this stays, and this stays, okay? So we can understand that how from a single cell, a complete embryo is formed, okay? Or fetus is formed. And as I said that there are morphogenetic movements. The cell migrate from particular area to another area. Now, how these cells migrate? That is important. And basically it is explained that the cells migrate because of certain special electrical cues. And these cues are developed by the potassium channels and the other ions such as sodium, chloride, zinc, and maybe some other uh, ions. But as such, the complete information that how this bioelectricity or these ions are actually responsible for migration of cells from one step stage, then transferring into a particular stage, um, and then they undergo complete division to form the different kind of organs like a kidney, like a heart, like a uh, archentron or the alimentary canal or the muscles or other organs. Uh, or the lungs, something like this. So, but it is said that, or it is explained on the basis of uh, uh, various experiments 
that the migration of cell uh, requires special electrical cues to move from one place to another place, localize that particular at that particular area, and then ultimately differentiate into the different organs which are present in our body. Once the fetus is formed, and then there is a complete development, this particular phenomena is known as actually the organogenesis, and actually the what you call the movements of these cells is known as the morphogenetic movements. Some people say that there may be a, some kind of additional chemical patterning is involved. There are certain substances are reported, uh, which I am not naming here, but these substances are known as morphogenetic movements. They are pro uh, morphogenetic substances. They are basically identified as proteins, and they are identified in all these developing cells and migrating cells. So possibly a chemical patterning as well as electric patterning help in the migration of cells and to stabilize that particular area and then ultimately differentiate it into a specific organ system. Okay. So I think I have to end here. And if you have any questions, you can go for it. Because the light is not, not there. So I don't think my laptop will work for more time. Uh, it has gone to the minimum. So what are questions I can answer? I will try to answer. Okay. So thank you, Professor Bhattagar, uh, for explaining this uh, all the different uh, theories of uh, genetic science in very detail and with all minute studies. So I would request if some participants have some questions regarding the topics, they can raise the question. Anybody has any question? It's very complicated, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, it is. A... You can send the questions to me, and I will like, reply. So it's not a big yeah. problem. I already given yeah. my email address m dot gmail dot com, so you can also write to me anytime. Yeah, can I ask yeah. some questions, sir? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Sure. Sure. As long yeah. as my laptop yeah. supports. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you, sir, for a very enlightening uh, session. Now, I just want to uh, know whether this first cell, which is mm. responsible and gets divided into many cells, is, what happens to gene there? Is gene also gets multiplied or divide or are getting a different uh, yes, addition, it, subtractions it, or modifications? As I said, genes are present in chromosomes. Okay? Yes. And what happens when... Uh, and fuse together. Twenty-three chromosomes comes from the is in the sperms, and okay, so the total chromosome become forty-six here. All right, in the yes, right. fertilized egg. Right. Genes are yeah. present in these chromosomes. So now, when there is a yes formation of a complete adult, all the genes present in these chromosomes are actually goes to every cell of a body. Okay? So genes which are okay. present on those 23 right. chromosomes also yeah. comes to you and the, those genes which comes into the mother comes <clears throat> to you. But you have to remember one thing. Suppose with these 23 chromosomes, 100 genes are transferred to you. But that doesn't mean that all the other genes are working. Okay. It's possible that some genes are active, some are not functional. They are present, but that particular time they are not functional. They may become active in the later part of your development. Maybe they become active when you are become adult. And for throughout life, they will remain silent. Okay. So gene comes with the chromosomes. They are not separate entity. Yes. Okay. Tarang. Thank you, sir. Tarang, yes. you have a question. Good yeah, evening to all. Uh, actually, I want to ask how can we relate this, all these things, all these genes, etc., 
chromosome to spectra with genealogy. Uh, if I say genes are there, if this term we will say that gene is there. Nam Karan, how can we relate it with Nam Karan in genealogy? Yeah, in case of Nam Karan. What is Nam Karan? What is Nam Karan? I don't know. Okay. Uh, I already said I am not an expert of genealogy, so. Yeah, it is true. Uh, and Tarangi, you need not to ask anything uh, regarding the genealogy because Pro Professor Bhattan well, is an expert. I, of, I can answer. Yeah, because expert of genetics. Professor Kachara can help you. Yes. I can discuss with Professor Kachara. You send these questions to Professor Kachara Sahab and he will uh, discuss with me <laughs> and I will explain into that. Okay. 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 Because okay, I have to you. understand the actual uh, meaning of that particular word, then I can answer it. Yeah, it is true. It is true. So uh, nobody. Secondly, whether, secondly, a question is asked in genealogy: What will be the represented? What will be represented by gene? See, gene is a gene. It's a DNA. Whatever you call it. Okay. Yeah. And it is a existing entity. Today I can see a gene in a bottle. Okay, it is possible. I can take out a gene and can see in a bottle. Yes. Yes. So. So it is not like uh, the other things which are explained in genealogy. All right. Clear. Gene is a chemical structure. Okay. Any other thing? Okay, sir. Uh, you have another question related to genetic science. You can ask that question, okay? Anybody has any question? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Yes. Sir, color blind, color blind mm. genes, how many generation it can be passed or it can be not passed? Oh, the phone is stuck. It's gone. Yeah. All the participants are requested to ask the question only regarding the uh, genetic science and not in the context of Jainism. Because we have different experts, they have no expertise in Jainism, but they are expert of genetic science or other aspects of the course content. Okay, so, I think the phone of Professor Bhattagar is not working or uh, not supporting. So today we have to stop here. If somebody has any question, they can ask the question through email and we can transfer or forward that question to Professor Bhattagar and you will get answer from him. Was there a lecture last Saturday? And last Saturday, it was the lecture on uh, karmic bondage, rise, and fusion by Professor Dev Kumar. And it is already posted in the module six. Okay, thank you. Okay, both the lectures, 10th and 11th lectures are uh, posted on, okay. the, on the module six. Thank you so much. Yes. So uh, we should uh, stop here. Uh, if somebody has any question, please send through email studies SJP uh, and we will forward the question. So thank you for joining the lectures.
and I'm also very much thankful to Professor Ghatagar for delivering delivering four talks on genetic science, and he has made uh, all the things related to genetic science which are necessary to understand uh, very well, and that's why uh, we could at least we could get something out of his lectures. Though these kind of studies need some more time, more detailed detailed study, and for that we have to make our efforts on our level. Uh, we cannot expect everything from professor though his videos are available on modules and uh, we have to listen to that video every day repeatedly so that we can get what he wanted to convey so thank you should we thank stop you. here yes yeah, should we leave here yes thank you thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Professor Bhatnagar is still connected.